we are getting there. So let's look at the last um, section of the creative process. So by now, we've used idea boards to um, for the first few stages of the creative process to sort of um, find your own inspiration, generate ideas, some gather some um, resources and some materials and organize some ideas. We used your black book to um, sort of explore and experiment and and get some um, rough designs done. And then we finished the project, um, which happened to be in your black book, and that always won't be the case. But we did something in your black book, we made it your own. So you either did your cover or you did something on the inside of your black book. And this time it was your choice. Now that we've done everything, we're doing the last part of the creative process. So right now we're looking at presenting and performing and reflecting and evaluating. So this is just finishing the end of it. Um, whenever we have a project, we need to present it somehow. Um, ideally, when you do like a work of art, it's presented somehow to like in an art gallery or in an art show. Um, and then that way you're giving it to the public, you're getting feedback from them, um, because artwork is supposed to be seen. What we're doing, like in a school, we have maybe an art show, we would put it up somewhere, we would even just share it with our um, classmates. But what we are doing is we are going to be posting it on a website that I call your digital portfolio. So it serves two purposes. You're handing it in on there because I can't touch your stuff. Um, and also this is where we're presenting it professionally to anyone who sees your portfolio. Also on your portfolio, the last step is our reflecting and our evaluating. So we're, that's us celebrating. Woohoo! How awesome you did. Now this is just a part to talk about, um, to tell, well one, to tell the viewer about your artwork. So that way you can give your point of view in written words so they can probably understand it a little bit more and where you're coming from and your creative process behind it. As a teacher, that helps me market for people viewing it in any way that you present it. That helps them appreciate it more. And you're also evaluating for yourself. You're just um, telling us how you can, um, what way you would like to improve, maybe what your ideas were behind it, what sort of influenced you, etc. Okay. So um, we are going to be using digital portfolios to be able to do this in urban art, to hand them in and to present everything. So we're documenting our creative process so I can evaluate that and see that. That's your ideas, your practice exercises, any rough ideas that we did, your final projects and your reflections. And we're using that through digital portfolios to hand everything and share with everybody. And also I'm hoping that because we're not sitting with each other. Normally in our class, we'd be like sharing, you know, we'd be able to see what other people are doing. You get up, you could walk over and see what somebody else is doing and think, oh, that's cool. And we're missing that opportunity because our class is split in half and we don't get to see everybody. So this is a really nice way to learn from each other. So I have been using digital portfolios um, for quite a while now, so pre-COVID. And my sort of thought was that as soon as you start taking art in grade nine, that as you take any sort of art, fashion, comtech, media arts, any kind of creative course, what you would do is you would start to start a website or a digital portfolio, and you would have a page for each year. So by the time that you get to grade 12, you would have, um, a record of all of the creative projects that you, you did, whether it's in visual art, urban art, um, their animations maybe in your uh, media arts, maybe there's stuff that you did on your own. But then that way you would have sort of all the stuff that you've done your high school career. And the idea behind it was mostly that um, in case you wanted to go on to like animation, video game design, fashion design, any sort of arts related thing in for post-secondary school, you would already have your portfolio all ready to go. Um, a lot of the things sort of um, exist kind of virtually right now too, when you think about digital art and animation, and I mean, you don't necessarily physically have it. So, you know, you may not have your files from a few years ago. Here's a great uh, example of a student that just graduated last year. His name is Raymond Lees. He's attending OCAD this year, so excited. This is an example of uh, something that was um, really successful uh, in terms of going to my webcam. Really successful in, they, you can see in grade 9, 10, 11, 12 media arts, um, they've recorded all their stuff. So here you see is that they have 
all the artwork that they have, all the projects that they've done and they've also got the reflections on it and that's important too because you might forget why you did something or the information behind something that you did a few years ago so when ray applied to art school um, you have to apply with a portfolio and you hand them in digitally now so everything is ready to go so you can either hand it in this format or you can you know probably copy and paste images but you have everything and you're not panicking in grade 12 in January when you're trying to get ready for your final exams going I don't know what to do so that's why I do do them now professionally um, I want to show you an example of a professional artist and how they use websites or digital portfolios. So this actually, his name is, uh, oh, it's Blot. Darn. His name is uh, Joey Manet. That stinks. And he actually is a uh, former student of mine from 16 years ago, um, from when I taught at Donovan before Donovan closed. And he's doing really well. He had something painted in the Oshawa Center for a while there. But this is sort of a screenshot of his um, of his digital portfolio or his professional website. On the front page, it's his name, and he's talking a little bit about who he is. And it's showcasing all the different types of art that he does. Um, and then, of course, it would have images and everything. So this is what Joey would use to apply to an art show if he was looking for a job, um, if he wants to sell his art, right, just, and just to show everybody. So um, this is a great tool for absolutely everyone, whether you're going to art school, whether you're going to be a professional artist, or just for this class to just showcase all the stuff that you've done to the teacher, to your friends, to your parents, okay? So... We are going to make our digital portfolios and it's super, super easy. So that will be the next lesson. So I will see you there.